Hi there. This is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. I am doing a very, very quick piece today. This is a four by six um, watercolor pad. And I am doing a quick painting as a Valentine present for my beloved, my husband Troy. Um, basically, what I'm doing is a quick watercolor of our two little girls, um, Shadow and Brody. I'm sorry, sir. Brody was our former boy, sweet boy. He uh, passed away in June. Shadow replaced him. She's a year old now. She's a, a German Shepherd mix. We believe she's either half Malinois or um, we have been told uh, Siberian Husky. Uh, we still aren't quite sure, but uh, she's quite a character. And then Dash is our purebred Basenji. She's our third Basenji. And um, this is Valentine's Day and I wanted to give Troy a nice little present. So I thought I'd whip out literally whip out a uh, watercolor for him and I'm gonna stick it in an envelope and give it with him with dinner tonight and this is I'm working off of a uh, photograph I've got off camera of the two sleeping they haven't slept together much um, it's they have an interesting s sibling rivalry dash is uh, six years old now and she's quote unquote the lady of the house but uh, her sister her new sister happens to be a lot bigger and so they contend for uh, who gets what and rivalry and what have you but uh, in the last several months they've been sleeping more together and playing heavily together so it's it's not the vast rivalry it once was but I'm starting with a really, really rough sketch, and then this is my kneaded eraser. Again, I, I talk about this a lot. Um, I utilize kneaded erasers a lot, for, so I'm putting this really, really rough drawing down first, and then I'm ghosting it all back. It's like you draw the whole dang thing, and then you get rid of the whole dang thing. So it's like all I've got here, you can see very, very lightly. Um, the initial drawing underneath it's kind of like dot to dot I treat it like dot to dot it's like I've set up my initial rough that gives me kind of a a um, feeling for where everything is now I'm gonna go in and do the placement a little bit better And like I said, I'm looking at a, a photograph off screen while I'm drawing this. This is not just out of my head. So I'm, I've got some reference points. And I, I will go into, um, I'll do that a little bit big. Um, I will go into more in some future videos about how you use reference points for drawings so you, you can see where things are. Because when you're drawing and you're creating, um, realistic art or art that has an illusion of realism there are lots of little tricks that you can use for figuring out placement of shape and what have you now with this particular drawing that I'm doing right now um, like I said I'm using a photograph but it, it's one of these things where I'm using markers within the photograph itself it's like I'm looking at the edge of the paper I'm looking at um, relationships like this ear here to the drape above and by using those different relationships within the photograph I'm figuring out where I want to put things. And, and the thing is, is that nobody's going to be looking back at the original photograph that I'm using. Actually, they might. Um, that you can compare um, what I'm doing 
but it's not as specific in the final as it needs to be. And I made her nose a little bit long, so I'm going to shorten that up. Let's see here. Dash. And Dash got her name because she has a, and you can't see it on this one because she's all curled up like a little cinnamon bun. She's got a little white dash on her nose. And that's how she got her name. It's like we, we knew um, her breeders were going to have some brindles. And brindle color among Basenjis is relatively new in like the past 10 years. Um, some people went back to Africa to uh, infuse the bloodline. The bloodline for Basenjis is originally from the Congo region of Africa. And they're a very ancient breed of dog. Um, there have been some depictions of them in um, ruins in Egypt. So this, this breed has been around for a long time. But it hasn't been in uh, Europe or um, outside of Africa until about the 30s when some were brought back with a gorilla of all things in a cargo ship and they started breeding them in the United States. And uh, it was funny, they're, they're considered barkless dogs and they will bark occasionally. Um, they're not voiceless, they just don't hold a sustained bark. That is not part of their, their, their thing. So they're, they're known to be quote unquote barkless dogs, but they have quite a few sounds and they're, they can be very vocal and very opinionated. They're little cat dogs. They are not the breed for everyone. I got introduced the, to them from my husband, Troy. He had had two before he met me, and uh, I was willing to try a new breed of dog. Um, I grew up with German Shepherds, which is why our, our past dog, Brody, and Shadow here, I'm, I'm a very big fan of the breed. And between the two, it's, it's like um, we've had both. And... This is, uh, Shadows our second German Shepherd together, and Dash is our, um, third Basenji. And we've had all of our pups through their full lifetimes. Okay. We're just about done with the, the initial pencil part of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it with, um, ink. When I'm done, I'm, um, this is just your, your, a standard mechanical pencil. It's a um, 0.7 um, Pentel that I got at the drugstore. You, know, you, you still can get various art supplies at drugstores. So that's the initial drawing. Now I'm going to go in with watercolor. Um, I'm using, this is a Winsor & Newton, my favorite, Series 7, Winsor & Newton, it's a uh, number 2, and I am going to start out with my standard, actually should start out with some burnt umber, but and I seem to be out of raw umber. So what I'm doing, I'm going to put it in the camera, this is my palette. And the uh, paint itself is currently dry, so once it's, I have a um, palette I got from um, Cheap Joe's, and you, I filled it up with tube watercolor, and you can paint straight from wet, wet watercolor, or what I'm doing right now is I'm adding water to the various colors that I plan on using, just to um, loosen up the gum arabic because that's that is the uh, um, vehicle for the pigment it, gum arabic is um I'm trying to think of the word it dissolves with water and then once it the water evaporates it the gum or the glue dries holding the pigment in place until it's wet with watercolor again. And so again, the problem with watercolor is that it is a fugitive paint, um, meaning that, you know, you, you do have to keep it, uh, basically dry. Okay. So I'm going to start with some, this is, uh, 
burn umber for shadow. And I'm just, this is wet on, this is wet on dry. Um, I usually, the, the technique that I use mostly is wet on dry. And I, I will mix the two if you you've, uh, know a little bit about watercolor. Um, it goes between wet on wet, uh, wet on dry. And what wet on wet is, is the paper is already wet and you mix in the watercolor into the paper while it's wet and that'll give you the flowing boxing type effects that you can get with watercolor. Um, I usually, I, I'll do both types of techniques. It's like right now um, I'm doing wet watercolor obviously on dry paper. However, the paper's going to be already wet when I start painting on it. So um, I will paint the, uh, the wet into dry. Okay. Because I, that way, um, that's how you get some of the, the neat mixing effects. Okay, I'm going to let that. And what you can do with what I usually do with, with watercolor, okay, this, this section is all extremely wet right now. So anything that I paint on top of it is going to um, flow into each other. Now watercolor dries extremely fast, so I'm going to let that sit a bit and I'll paint Dash. And she is where... where um, Shadow is more of a burnt umber. Um, Dash is a burnt sienna with a little bit. I'm mixing up in burnt sienna with a little bit of cadmium red in it because she is almost orange in color. She's very much um, fox colored. It's like I have a little fox and a, a little wolf or a domestic fox and a domestic wolf. So that's why she's gonna, she's got more of the red color and I'm trying to get, she's got a little bit of snippet of white on her nose, which is why we named her Dash. Um, we, we had all kinds of names if we were going to get a, a, a brindled Basenji, we're thinking Zipper or um, Lightning. There's all kinds of names you could give to a, a, a Basenji with uh, stripes on it. But we were having a tough time coming up with a, a name for uh, a standard red Basenji. And then when we saw her and she had this little dash of white um, streaky across her nose, it was like there wasn't even... I, when I saw her, I'm going, got the perfect name, Dash. <laughs> it's because when you think about it, that's Basenjis are faster than... For a 20-pound dog, man, try to catch one. Just try it. <laughs> It's like next to impossible to catch that little 20 pound dog. Okay. Now she's on a bed that's almost the same color as she is. Now, right, right now, I'm trying not to get into the, the wet. Now, mind you, for some reason, the burnt sienna is drying a little bit faster than the, the bird umber that I put down. So. And then I've got a curtain behind there that's kind of, it's just a plain white curtain. So I'm going to take the shadows and I'm going to do them in. This is um, just a regular violet. This is a really light violet that I put a lot of water in. So that I, I it, it'll be like um, the shadows in the curtain. So like I said, it's a white curtain behind here. Let's see here. Make sure that the whole thing's more or less in camera. There we go. And you can tell. You can see my, my fingers are in the picture. This is a, a I'm painting on a four by six watercolor block. This is Canson um, watercolor block. Um, I like I like to paint on watercolor blocks um, primarily because they're convenient and you don't have to stretch. The paper you don't have to tape it down I often I'll, I'll tape down paper if I'm gonna 
do watercolors. Um, so the watercolor blocks are extremely convenient. Um, if you want to purchase them, I prefer you can you can buy the blocks at uh, a place like Michael's or most of your art supply stores. Um, I like to go to Blick online or Cheap Joe's. Those are my two favorite places to buy art supplies. They're very reasonable priced. Um, they usually have like free shipping if you buy over 50 bucks. And believe me, with art supplies, it's very easy to go over $50 in art supplies. Okay, now um, Dash has got um, a blue pillow behind her and um, the floor that they're sleeping on, the rug that we have is, is a bit blue-gray. So I'm gonna use Payne's gray up here. Or excuse me, I'm not sorry. This is um, Prussian blue. My apologies. Um, so there's a Prussian blue pillow behind her. And then for the floor, I'm gonna mix Prussian blue with Payne's gray. And Payne's gray, and I mean, I have a very specific palette that's very limited for the most part. Um, and I like to use a more limited palette just because you can mix, you can mix most colors yourself um, with a very limited palette. And sometimes the fewer colors you use, the better. Just because you don't, um, you can sometimes get too many colors um, can get frustrating and how you um, come up with a final composition. Okay, so now I've got water floating everywhere here. So and I'm doing, you can tell there's a little bit of wet into wet here. And um, this is all dry. All the stuff that I painted is dry over here. This is all dry. And it's just wet down here and across the top there. So I'm going to do a little shadow on dash and I'm um, using the purple to do the shadows on her. Um, I like to use either a blue or a purple for my shadows when I'm doing shadows. You have to be careful with purple. Um, purple when watercolor gets dark very fast. And if you're doing watercolor, you, what you're trying to do too is you're trying to get some trans, it's, it's a transparent medium. Um, rather than say oils or gouache, um, watercolor or acrylic for that matter. You, though you can play, paint acrylic um, very lightly. Yeah. It's the, she's sleeping on a pillow. And it's like she's got one of those, she's got a dog bed and then the pillow is kind of tucked, tucked into the dog bed here. So I'm putting a little shadow there. Now I'm, th this puddle right above Shadow's head's not drying, so I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm blotting that away. And it's like, okay, I'm blotting that away too because I just stuck my fingers on. That's, that's the thing, um, after you've been working with watercolor as long as I have, um, you get to a point where you know um, how to fix mistakes. And I know a lot of people are afraid of watercolor because they're afraid that, you know, once they put it down, you, you know, how do you fix the mistakes? How do you fi pick them up? Um, paper towel is great. <laughs> you know, anything that you put down, you add water to it, and then you just blot it away with paper towel and then go back and paint over it again. And it's amazing how sometimes your mistakes can actually make your piece look better. Now, um, Shadow is a sable. Her, her uh, color is blended. Some German Shepherds have a saddle. Our, our last German Shepherd, Brody, had a beautiful, you know, black saddle. He was, he was actually very stereotypical colored German Shepherd, except he was cream and then black. He was a really pretty boy. I miss him. That's a good dog. But Shadow here is a, um, she's kind of a, a sable color, which which in um, Shepherds, if you ever look it up online, sable is almost their equivalent of brindle because they've got a long fur. They've got a double coat. So you don't really see the stripes 
in the brindle on a shepherd and so it's um, they call the color sable and it's kind of a, the, the color blends into the dog and then she's got a very white belly Now this is kind of getting a little muddled, but here's the thing with watercolor. When it dries, it has a tendency to, what you've got to do is actually give it um, some opportunity to make mistakes. Like I said, if you're feeling bad about the way your watercolor is working, seriously, just let it dry and you'll be amazed how once it dries, it will look so much better than what you expected it to because sometimes it takes the the painting that time to cure and the uh, the colors to fully blend with the drying for it to get its full effect so when you think that oh my god my I really screwed up this painting it really looks bad and if a, a watercolor painting looks too muddy after it dries my big recommendation is take a big brush Go over it with um, clear water, just straight water, and then blot the whole thing away. Um, you'll be amazed how what's left behind is what you really wanted. Sometimes if you, I mean, try it, try try doing that with a painting. Just overdo it. Just overdo the whole thing. Do too much to painting. So do something that you're not, that you don't think that you'll be really, um, that you really care about or you, you put too much faith in just you know something that you're going to do is a quick exercise and take it over the sink and run water on it and see what it looks like when you're done and you will be amazed how that can just turn out amazing um that's what happened to me once i really i overdid a painting i thought it was it was for a class project no less and I thought, oh, what the heck, I'm going to just throw the whole thing underneath the the, uh, the sink and see what happens. And it really turned out amazing. So it, it's something that I would highly recommend giving a try to. Okay, now we're going to put a few shadows in. This uh, shadow herself is on a pillow. And the reason why we named her Shadow, um, if you have don't know anything about German Shepherds, um, they're herding dogs, and they will herd anything, including you, especially you. One of the, 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 the standard jokes about German, once you own a German Shepherd, you will never go to ba the bathroom alone again. They will follow you everywhere. And um, I said to Troy, the next, the next German Shepherd we had, it's like I really wanted to name whatever German Shepherd we got, Shadow. Because Brody shadowed us everywhere, followed us everywhere. And that's what your German Shepherd does. They, they just stick to you like glue, usually. Shadow's a little bit different in the respect that, like I said, we think she's got, uh, she's either got Malinois or um, Husky, or Siberian Husky in the, her, which both types of breeds of dog are a little bit more independent. And even though they're still herding breeds, um, the, the Husky definitely isn't, but the Malinois is, um, is an all-purpose dog, but they're very, um, prey-driven. You want, um, <laughs> both my dogs are hunters. Um, the Basenji, definitely prey-driven. Okay, now, this has to, to wait for a few minutes, um, to fully dry before I can actually get into the pen work, but I still want to do that in front of you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my pen. This is a, uh, a Micron Pigma. Um, this is the replacement for Rapidograph pens nowadays. Um, it's got archival ink, it's got pigment in it, and it works like it's a standard um, felt tip but it works better than a felt tip and it's much more accurate. So I'm just going to, um, since this area is dry with the Basenji, I'm going to uh, go in and detail her a bit. Mm. 
and she's got her nose tucked into her leg. She's such a little donut. I mean, both the dogs are. It's like a shadow. She's not in this particular picture photograph that I'm using, but uh, Shadow is a a real donut dog too. She she likes to curl up into a little ball. We're just waiting for the the cute thing about Dash when she was uh, when we had Brody. Um, she would curl. She would do two things. She would sleep on top of him. And she would uh, curl up in the his uh, the center of him, so it was donut within a donut. And uh, unfortunately, um, she wants to do that with uh, Shadow, but Shadow won't let her. And we're just waiting for it's like we're hoping with the winter and the cold and what have you, they they'd curl up together. But you know, maybe next winter. They're, they're, like I said, they're getting along better, but when you have two girls, they have their own opinions about uh, how they want to do things. But again, I'm doing this, this is real fast. I'm not focusing on what I'm doing much. I'm just trying to uh, let it go with the flow. But then that sometimes that I, I've gotten to the point where I like um, both my, my artwork in both ways. I like it when I'm really focused and I do really detailed work. And then I also like it nowadays when uh, it gets a little bit more loose. Um, I used to have to have everything like tight as a drum. And I still do, actually. I'm, I'm, um, I do rather tight work. For the most part, I love to do. Um, I need to do some more demonstrations for you guys in pen and ink and direct traditional pen and ink because I really, really like to do cross hatching and detailed work of that nature. Um, but like I said, as I've gotten older, I've gotten more of an appreciation for my loose work too. And I think part of it is is that you know the more you draw, the better you get at the um, at just let being able to let yourself go and do work um, just um, naturally or not worrying about how detailed things are or how they come out and I think it just it takes time for for learning and doing more drawing work and the more you do over time and the better you get the more confident you feel to just be able to let your drawings go and be whatever they're going to be and I wish that you know it's like I could have had that feeling but I still don't have that feeling about my work I swear um, you know you're an artist when you're never really, really happy with what you do. Or, you know, I've always wondered, it's like, is that the difference between somebody who, who uh, makes a really um, professional, you know, the, the fine artists that they, they don't have any problem with their own work um, with me? I swear I will never be fully satisfied with anything that I, I do. Okay, do got a little more more detail work, and we need to. I want to put uh, a little bit of shadow in here. We've it, we've, it, we've got it's all, all the overall value right now. Is I've kept pretty light, which is okay. But I think I want to put a little darkness background here. So I'm putting this is this Payne's gray. This is straight Payne's gray. So I like about it, it comes off like a dark blue, more than a, a it's called Payne's Gray, but it, it has a, more of a blue color to it. And I'm going to put a little bit of that in the foreground here too. Just to set it off a bit. Okay, and I'm going to put a little bit 
more into uh, Shadow's face because she's got a pretty dark muzzle. She's got almost. She's got a black muzzle and she's got a lot of black on her. That's much more her. And then she's got a lot of black down her back. So I'm going to, now instead of using black, I'm using Payne's gray. And there is a a um, a group in the watercolor, in the world of watercolor that says don't use black. And I I just have a tendency not to use a lot of black. Let's throw a little black in there. Um. And my attitude is if you need to use black, use black. It's a color. <laughs> it's just there's a whole crew that says, oh, no, no, you want to mix your own blacks. And it's like, yeah, you can do that. But sometimes when you mix your own blacks, they get muddy. And Mars black and lamp black both have their, their uses. And I don't have any real problem with people using black when they want to. But this one, I'm just going to keep it, keep the paint gray in there. Okay, and that pillow that, that Dash is on has got some uh, markings. They're like these little, it, it's meant to look like, I think, um, a, uh, a leopard skin or something. So I'm going to put put a little bit of, and just the pattern, a little extra pattern, you know, it will look nice. It's, and also, because we, we know that's her pillow, so, you know, that's a, it's, it's a memory tool, too. It's like, you know... Troy will look at this and know that this is the floor of my studio where the two dogs are sleeping. I think we're just about done with this. It's kind of fun, fun little piece. Just that I've got, this is Valentine's Day. I'll be, I'll put this up uh, a few days after Valentine's Day this year so you guys can see it. See me painting my Valentine's present for Troy. But he was really sweet. He went to the grocery store. I mean, we don't really celebrate um, Valentine's Day all that often. I mean, he's he's gotten me some nice Valentine's presents in the past. But it was so cute. He came home with with a uh, a bar of dark chocolate and uh, a special uh, coffee Twixt, and said Happy Valentine's Day. That was so cute. Until I'm rather in love with my husband. <laughs> But uh, anyways, so we're just about done here. And sometimes too, if you're, I, I like to add, um, you can tell I'm kind of doing some dotting and that adds some, where I'm, I'm just blotting with the, the brush and that can add some texture to the piece. And I think I'm gonna just put just a little bit of blue back here. This is um, curtains next to the, uh, I've got a, a uh, sliding glass door in my office, and I, these are the curtains that are just, they're just straight white curtains. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Um, it's just a quick piece. Like I said, this is a Valentine present for my beloved. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, come back for the next one. Thank you again. Name's Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. I'm on Patreon, Instagram. Um, check out my uh, link tree at Lynn Hunter. Um, that's about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>